Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of A Better You. I am your host, Fernanda Ramirez, and in today's episode, we are talking all about entering our hobby girl era in 2024. Although when I'm filming this, it is December 12th, and we could talk about Christmas things, I think I'm going to save that for next week, right before Christmas happens, and instead, we are talking about 2024 subjects, because I feel like this is such an exciting time. Everybody is thinking about ways to glow up, to revamp for the new year, to do things a little bit better than they did in the past, to evolve, to grow, you know, there's so many exciting topics when it comes to all things new year and creating new habits. And I thought that this would be the perfect time to create an episode on something that I particularly embodied, I think this past year, but want to continue to embody within the next year. And that is becoming someone who has a wide array of hobbies and a wide array of interests. In today's episode, we are going to talk about why hobbies are so important and how they are so vital to ourselves and how they are so useful for our growth and just the importance of learning new things as you age. I feel like when someone tells you you should be learning on your downtime or as you age or in your free time, you're just like, absolutely not. I want to rot on my bed and do absolutely nothing. But reframing that and kind of thinking about doing all these activities that you genuinely find joy in and in fact, finding new activities that you have so much potential to enjoy is so important, especially as you get older and you have to do more things that involve chores and responsibilities, just things that you have to do. I feel like it's easy to slip into a slope where you kind of do the things you need to do, go to work, go to school, you sleep, you eat, you shower, and then you go on your phone during the off time. But it's so important to foster those hobbies. I'm going to give you guys different hobby ideas that you can incorporate before the year ends and going into 2024, as well as different hobby phases that I have personally have and telling you guys my experience with those things and things that I personally really love because you may find love in those things as well. I'm going to tell you guys about ways that you can make more time for the hobbies that you currently have or want to have and as well as going into ways that you can enjoy spending that time alone. I have another episode on A Better You that is all focused on ways to spend time alone and to enjoy that alone time. So if you haven't listened to that episode already, I highly recommend it. I feel like it could be a part one to this one and give you so many more ideas on ways to enjoy that time alone and not just feel a little bit guilty that you're spending time alone, but in fact, love it, foster it, come out of even maybe that solitude era with a few new tricks up your sleeve maybe not tricks but like new things that you learned I think we're all trying to constantly become more interesting and be interesting and have a lot to offer so the more that we can learn the more that we absorb we're like little sponges we're able to spread it out into the world make new friends from it show others our passions and you know even that in itself finding new passions I think that's a really important thing within hobbies as well anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this episode I'm really excited for this one and I feel like I have a lot to say on this before I diving right into it. I wanted to say thank you so much to you guys. I didn't say this in the last episode, which I should have and I forgot to, so I'm saying it now, but the Spotify Wrapped just came out on December 1st, and if you're not sure what Spotify Wrapped is, it is basically when Spotify, and I think Apple does it as well, but they kind of give you a little summary of your listening habits throughout the year, and they'll tell you your top five artists, the number one artists you listen to, your top five most played songs of the year, how long you listen to those songs and they also talked about your top podcast that you listen to and how many minutes you listen to them for and this is my first year of having a podcast it's almost been 10 months which is absolutely unreal I feel like the fact that the podcast has been a weekly thing on top of my regular YouTube channel has made me feel like the weeks are just escaping me and just passing by so quickly and it's honestly crazy that it's been 10 months that's all I've got to say but I'm so happy with where the podcast is and our growth and I I said this in the last podcast episode, but I've recently had some meetings that have to do with the podcast and there's just so many plans and exciting new ways that this podcast can turn in 2024. So I'm just so excited and inspired, but back to the original plot of the story, I was going to say since Spotify wrapped came out, so many of you guys have been tagging me because my podcast has been on your top five, um, most listened to podcasts of the year. And a lot of you guys had it as your number one, showing me the minutes that you guys have listened to. And some people had like 1800 minutes of me talk and I would say that the thought of that gives me a headache but the amount of time I probably listen to myself anyways while talking and editing all of my different platforms bro I I definitely hear myself talk the most out of anyone but 
Anyways, I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening to my podcast this year, for supporting me, for following along. If you guys have post notifications turned on, if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, if you follow my Instagram, if you've given it a review, if you've given it a rate, if you've recommended it to someone, if you've literally, I think that is the coolest thing as well. If you've spoken about my podcast to a friend in person or recommended it, I honestly couldn't thank you enough. I am so passionate about what I do if it wasn't obvious. So the fact that other people recognize that and give love to it I mean I could cry I just feel seen so thank you for listening thank you for all your support and the last thing I want to say is that if you don't already follow my main Instagram it is Fernando Ramirez with two A's in my last name I wanted to say that I have been uploading little Ferns Friday newsletters every single Friday on my channel I don't really know how to explain it I think I've said it once before on my podcast but Instagram has this new feature where you can create a broadcast channel and I have one for a better you and I have one for my main Instagram I highly recommend joining both because I give you guys behind the scenes updates and the one on the podcast is really cute because the broadcast channel is called a better us which I think is a great community name because it ties all of us in there and then the one for my main Instagram Fernando Ramirez has a little Friday newsletter every single week I kind of change up what I say on the newsletter but it's got recipes right now for December gift ideas activity ideas affirmations goals for the week little inspo pics my favorite trends of the week etc so definitely check out those if you want to be more involved in the community and other than that let's get into it so we're talking about hobbies I want to start off by saying that this is no revolutionary topic you know I can tell you guys why hobbies are important and you're probably gonna say Fernanda I knew that I'm not dumb I literally knew that but sometimes we need other people to tell us things that we already know for it to fully register in your head that's all I've got to say there are so many times where I know what is the right thing for me and I know what I should should be doing and I know that I should be off my phone and I know that I should be doing things with my hands and interacting with the real freaking world but sometimes when you hear someone lay it all flat for you you're like damn really what am I doing and it really does change something in your brain and ignites some inspiration for you to actually do something differently so that is the purpose of this episode I am here to inspire you to remind you that we live in a physical world and this may be just me this may be just me but I am chronically online that I'm I'll be the first to say it I'll be the first to say it as my job is social media and influencing and content creation I'm either filming or editing or on my phone scrolling or thinking of what next I'm gonna upload I can be on my phone a lot and sometimes I can go the whole day being on my phone I would say that oh my god that's so embarrassing like I'm on my phone all day but let's be honest here unless you are like a mom with kids and or like you've got a full nine to five maybe you've got two jobs to work for okay those people probably not scrolling on their phone all day and props to you because life is freaking hard and I do not expect you to be wasting time or maybe you don't even have the time to do hobbies right now that is okay that is understandable and you should not feel bad about that but I'm saying for maybe a lot of people that are in high school maybe people that are in college or they have extra time on their hands or maybe they're not working right now or maybe they're doing something like me it's really easy to get caught up on your phones I mean phones are literally designed to keep you on the app as long as possible the algorithms nowadays are so crazy so personalized to you that it's literally hard to get off your phone because it is so addicting and we are addicted to instant gratification why would we put all our I mean why would we go outside and work out and do vigorous activity and start sweating or learn something that's confusing and hard and it's going to take effort and practice when we could just entertain ourselves so easily with our phones watch a youtube video watch some tiktoks you get lost in the sauce you're scrolling 50 videos later and you can't even recall any of the videos you just saw (sighs) sorry i'm passionate because (laughs) this is me sometimes Anyways, as I was saying, it's really easy to get caught on your phone. It's really easy to get lazy. To me, hobbies are so important because it fills my day with a lot more joy. I feel like I get to be off my phone, live in the present moment, be happy and, you know, just interact with new things that I haven't done before. Hobbies are also an incredible way to unwind and relax and do something that is easy on the mind while still being fun. And I think having fun in your day-to-day life and just being happy, like literally Really just doing things that are fun even if they're meaningless even if they seem stupid to someone else that probably makes or breaks someone's life honestly I was watching 
watching a documentary the other day and I think it's called Live Till 100 and I highly recommend watching it if you haven't already. But it was talking about different ways that you can live the longest and they went to like five different countries where they have the most amount of people that live up to 100. And one of the main things that they kept saying is that these old people just prioritize moving their body, having fun and doing even intricate movements with their hands and basically just doing all these hobbies that actually makes their brain turn and reduces their stress. So that's another reason why hobbies are important. Not that we didn't know that, but we're trying to live till 100. At least I am. Not only that, but hobbies can improve your overall well-being. They can act as a form of therapy and they also just let you dive into a world where you can get lost in it, be super focused on it, be even hyper focused on it and kind of forget about what's happening in real life, especially if you have a really stressful job or school or classes or whatever. Also, I don't know about you guys, but I, I think my goal would be to be a very interesting person. I mean, I want to be in a conversation with someone and constantly have things to talk about, constantly be able to say, oh, this is what I'm doing now, this is what I'm doing now. I think my nightmare is for someone to say, hey, Fernanda, how have you been? And I say, oh, you know. And they go, what's new? And I'm like, oh, you know. And they go, oh my God, so have you done anything new? Like, what have you been doing? And I'm just like, no. Like, that is a nightmare. And I hope that you guys know that it might also be a nightmare for you. Or maybe you're realizing this now that I'm saying it and you're like, damn, this is me recently. Maybe I should do something. I think that's the little, that's the kicker for me when I know that I need to get doing something on my spare time because I'm like I cannot go with someone asking me what's new and me having no answer so whether that be learning a new language or playing a new instrument or mastering a new craft there are so many ways that different types of hobbies can offer you personal growth and different skill development another reason why I think hobbies are so important is because if you do them at a public place or you do it at a place where you need to go to that location it offers you so much opportunity to make new friends and engage with your community. Again, because our world is so on our phones and technology, if you don't need to go outside, you really don't have to. There are so many different ways that you can order to your door. You can live literally out of the comfort of your own bedroom and you can go days without witnessing or interacting people if you please to, especially if you're an introvert or you're someone that doesn't have many friends. It can be really easy to get caught up in that cycle. And I think going to hobbies that are in person or places that you have to go out of your way to visit, you will automatically make friends. And even if you don't necessarily make great friends you can make new acquaintances you can witness different people how they interact or you can learn some new names maybe if you're single you find the love of your life you know I really feel that every single person has something to offer and I think that's really something that my mom taught me. I feel like she always would say that to me when I was younger that everybody has something to offer, everybody has something to teach you and everybody is a potential friend. So if you haven't necessarily gotten that perspective or don't really have that in mind, I wanna say that to you because even though we can become a little bit guarded, ultimately I think one of the reasons why we are on this earth is to embrace community and make friends with other people and interact. So that is a big bonus point for me on why hobbies are so important to my life and that is a place where I make so many friends especially with people that have similar interests and I think it is so fun to meet a different person that has a similar interest to you that may be better in that subject so you're constantly learning and evolving even more than you already knew about that particular subject a few other reasons why hobbies are so important and why you absolutely need to consider doing more in 2024 is because one it boosts your self-esteem and confidence like no other. I think people are constantly trying to find on TikTok, on YouTube, on anywhere, what are the secrets for confidence? How do I become more confident? How do I become more attractive? How do I boost my self-esteem? And the answer is right in front of you. When you practice things and you become better at them, you rack up points in your brain basically that tell you, wow, I'm good at this and I'm good at this and I'm getting better at this. And the more that you feel those little like bursts of inspiration and accomplishment and those feelings Feelings of being proud of yourself, whether that be for sticking with a hobby, trying a new hobby, or getting better at a new hobby, they will automatically boost you in all of those areas in your life and you will have a glow like no other. That will be the ultimate glow for 2024, is finding a new hobby that you're passionate about, excited about, and your natural glow will rub onto others. And when people ask you, oh my god, you are glowing, what have you been doing new? You can tell them, well, I picked up some new hobbies and they, they will be so impressed, they will be so attracted to you, they'll say, wow, she's so interesting, she is so cool, I want to be her friend. 
friend. At least that's how I portray other people. Another reason why hobbies are so important to me is because it prevents me from burning out 100% of the time. I think for anybody, when you're too stressed out or involved in one particular aspect of your life, you kind of forget to enrich your life with all of this added fun stuff that to you may seem like stupid or unimportant or unproductive, but those are the things that give you the balance that you need to attack those harder things with full force and with full attention. You really do need to practice switching off that part of your brain and going into play mode, like your inner child would. And play may look different for everybody, which is why we're gonna talk about different hobbies that you guys can do later, but ultimately keeping your mind fresh, creative, and active is what's gonna give you a sense of purpose day to day. And last but not least, I wanna say this. I remember when I was younger, Back in the day when phones were not a thing. I had no iPod. I didn't even have a TV in the back of my parents' car. I would be like so bored, staring out of my window, pretending I was a, in a music video when we were in the car. And I'd be like, oh my God, I'm so bored. Why don't I have a phone? Why don't I have an iPod? Why don't we have a TV? Or I would be like, dad, like I'm so bored. And he would be like, Fernanda, I'm not a clown. Like I'm not here to entertain you and you don't need to be entertained 100% of the time. You're allowed to be bored. You're supposed to be bored. And you know what? That boredom fostered many creative ideas, fostered probably many dreams that I had and a big imagination. And I think as we get older, again, with the constant chatter in our brains, with all these new different forms of media, even just the normalization of like a fast paced lifestyle, I feel like we've gotten so used to being on go, go, go mode. And I will be the first one to say, I am definitely someone who indulges in hustle culture. That sounds so stupid, but like, like really always focusing on work and living to work. And I'm super passionate about my job, so I'm not complaining. And also my job, you know, Whatever, I don't wanna get into that because someone will probably be like, Fernanda, shut up. But speaking me personally as an influencer or content creator, I feel like you can get really caught up in constantly being engaged in something, whether that be planning your next trip, planning your next event, getting ready for this party, engaging with these people, constantly conversing, socializing and partying and editing and being on your phone and filming. And there's all these things that are constantly feeding you and trying to take your attention. And even if you're not an influencer, I'm sure many of you guys can probably relate. There's always things stealing your attention that you often don't leave space for yourself to be bored. This is so pathetic, but I remember when I was younger, I would like wake up when I obviously had no phone and I would like stare at the wall for like an hour before I got up out of my bed. And I would just think to myself, I would just stare at the wall and think and Tell me why. Now it's like my alarm goes off, I'll roll around in bed and I'll either get up, go work out and like do my things. So there's really just no time there or I'll roll around, go on my phone, scroll for a bit and then get up. Either way, even in that small moment, like waking up, I'm not even giving myself that time to be bored. Whereas before I would like look at the wall probably and just start thinking about things or using my imagination. I know that sounds super embarrassing and I sound like a phone addict, which maybe I am, but I'm being honest, I'm being authentic and I feel like many people could possibly relate to me on this. And I'm speaking a lot about phones because that is what is present in my life, but take this conversation as you will. It might not be phones for you. It might be something else. It might even be that your job is taking up a lot of your time that you don't give yourself the time to be bored or maybe a TV show or it may be that you're constantly thinking about other things and you don't even give yourself that time to relax in your head whatever it may be you get the point give yourself that space to be bored give yourself that space to want to find new things to do and know that there are so many hobbies out there that will provide you different ways to spend your time that will not only be fun but give you these amazing benefits literally make you live longer improve your mental health and make you probably really fit for if there was a disaster someday and you just don't have your phone and you need to do things out in the world. So I found a list of hobbies online and I wanna go through them and kind of give you guys some ideas if you're looking for some new ones to try out. The first thing I wanna say is that there are so many different topics of hobbies that you can try. You don't just have to think about one super boring one that like someone recommended you, you hate it, you're like, I'm not doing that, no. There are so many different types of hobbies and definitely ones that will align with you no matter what your personality is like, no matter how much free time you have, or no matter what your skill set is. My favorite type of hobbies are probably creative hobbies or physical hobbies. There's also such thing as collecting hobbies, which I realized, and I was thinking about this before starting to talk about this on the podcast, I was like, what do I collect? And I literally couldn't think about anything that I purposely collect with intention because there may be a lot of things I collect like makeup and clothes, but that might be like slight hoarding. Like I don't think that's actually purposefully collecting. Whereas like I know other friends in my life that maybe 
collect Pokemon cards, or they collect different types of makeup, or they collect nail polishes, or they collect thimbles. <laughs> I have a friend that collects that. Anyways, we'll talk about that after. There's also outdoor hobbies, which I could definitely do more of, but I also have a lot of friends that do outdoor hobbies, especially because I live in British Columbia, which is like the CEO of outdoor hobbies and hiker bros and granola people. <laughs> so I could definitely get into the outdoor hobbies a little bit more. There's also musical hobbies, culinary hobbies, intellectual hobbies. DIYs and home improvement hobbies, that's giving like my dad. There's tech and gaming hobbies, and there's community and social hobbies. So there's so many different categories of hobbies, and now I'm like just so excited because I'm like, why are there so many things to do, so many things to try? Why don't I do more of these things? It's also really fun going through these, and I'm sure that you can probably think of someone in your life that pertains to what every single one of these categories of hobbies. And I think that that's really cute and wholesome because if you are looking for a way to connect with a friend, a family member, a significant other, you could probably think about what their hobbies really are and how you can spend time with them doing their hobby. That would probably be a great love language, which side note, but like it's hitting quality time, it's hitting physical touch potentially, acts of service, what are the other ones? Um, potentially words of affirmation. I don't know. You get the point. It's basically hitting like all the different love languages. If you go out of your way, learn their hobbies and then actively do it with them. So we're going to go through all of these categories and I'm going to tell you guys some ideas I have for you and tell you guys some of my personal stories of where I have pertained to these particular categories and the hobbies that I love. Starting off with the creative hobbies. This is me through and through. I think I was in art classes every single year that I was in high school and when I was younger, younger, I used to do art classes, which I love. That memory just randomly sparked into my head the other day and I'm sad that I'm not in art class right now. I also, if you didn't know this, before I started my YouTube channel or anything, like when I was probably 10 years old, my dream was to start a crafting YouTube channel. I wanted to to be so craftastic in 2012. So that 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 category is me. I think that is my Libra sun coming through and loving all things beautiful and wanting to beautify every single thing in my space. So some creative hobbies you can do are painting, drawing, sculpting, photography, for writing, there is poetry, fiction, nonfiction, and there's also crafting such as knitting, sewing, and woodworking, which I actually used to be in like a knitting class when I was in like grade four. It was like an extracurricular activity and now I totally forgot how to do it. So I need to ask my mom ASAP on a tutorial on how to crochet because why are there the cutest crocheted things nowadays? And also side note, you could totally make this into a side hustle, which is not what we're trying to do because I mean, essentially a hobby I feel like is better when you're not getting paid for it. But in today's day and age, like low key, why is everything so expensive? Why does everyone have 50 side hustles? It could be a good idea. As said earlier, my favorite creative hobbies back when I was younger was definitely doing DIYs, polymer clay, duct tape wallets, little washi tape things. I honestly loved playing with gel pens and just stationery in general. One of my favorite hobbies, even in the pandemic, was creating a bullet journal. I absolutely loved making these intricate journals that had such detailed little drawings and it was so organized. I had all my different and pens and my different highlighters and it was actually functional as well so that was one of my favorite things to do and it took up a lot of my time and then of course even though now it is my job my hobby before was filming videos and editing and just video editing in general I thought that was super fun some physical hobbies you can take up which there are so many because there are so many sports but hiking that's a huge one in BC and I definitely want to make it a goal for myself in 2024 to go on more hikes because there are so many where I live and I don't even think I've done a hike before. Running, that's another one that I definitely don't do enough of and my heart health probably needs it. Yoga, that is a big one for me. I absolutely love yoga and vinyasa yoga. It was actually probably the type of exercise that made my body the most fit ever. You don't realize how much strength and flexibility it requires to be very good at yoga. So that is something I really love. And it also is so relaxing to your mind. I genuinely don't think I've had better sleeps or even honestly more productive days than when I was in my yoga era. Dancing is another great physical hobby. And one thing I will say is that 
Okay, clubbing, going out might not be everyone's cup of tea, but if you love to dance, you don't even have to drink alcohol, but you can go out with your girlfriends, go to the club and go dance. Like it could be whatever type of music you like, whether that be Latin music or pop or hip hop. Sometimes they have events in your area. Like I went to a pop up like DJ at this arena thing for um, ABBA. It was for my friend's birthday and it was so fun. Everybody was dressed like they were from the 70s or I don't know what decade that was in, but it was just so fun. Um, I know there's also like events where it's like only Taylor Swift music, whatever. You can go out with your friends. You can make it a fun moment. You guys can get ready. And not that that's necessarily a hobby, but like that's something you'll do in your spare time and that brings you joy and you just go and dance with your friends. That is my favorite hobby for sure. Another good physical hobby is martial arts. Like I have never done this before. I think I did Taekwondo maybe for a little bit when I was younger maybe that totally didn't happen and I'm hallucinating but I definitely know that my brother did and so I remember being at that gym but you never know when you're gonna need some self-defense there's also cycling I absolutely love cycling I think it's a great workout and I mean I love biking in general I always bike in the summer and having a cute bike is also just so aesthetic and cute and it kind of makes you want to ride the bike I also think that getting a bike is so fun if you have a city that kind of allows you to bike around because you can get to different cafes you can bring all your like crafty hobby things and go to a park and situate yourself there and do that there in the outdoors some other physical hobbies that I personally really like is weightlifting obviously I feel like that is so fun it's so good for you and doing those classes there's always so many friends that you can make there. I also, I, I might have said this in another podcast episode, but I really want to try rock climbing. I swear I used to do that all the time when I was younger and I just have an urge. I have a feeling that I would be really good at it. So I really want to do rock climbing. Oh, I've recently been doing a lot of jump rope, which has been really fun and probably really good on my knees and my cardio in general. You can also really get into the hot girl walks, play a podcast. I feel like that's a two in one hobby because you can walk, you can wear a cute little set and you can play a podcast that teaches you something. Even though I'm a big music gal, I love just jamming out to music, but like podcasts will probably teach you something better. So that might be a better hobby for you. Obviously, you guys know I just signed up for ballet last week. I gave the little description of how my first class went in the last episode. So listen to that if you haven't already. But that was a super fun hobby to start and I want to continue that in January. And then another physical activity hobby that I will be doing going into the winter time is skiing. I just bought so many passes to go skiing. So if I don't go, it would be a waste of my money. So I will definitely be going a lot this year with my friends, with my dad. And again, it's great bonding activities. For the collecting hobby, I was a little bit confused about this because I personally don't collect anything. So I searched it up and it says that collecting is a childhood hobby for some people, but for others, it is a lifelong pursuit of something started in adulthood. So I'm kind of confused. And it says that collectors who begin early in life often modify their goals when they get older. It says that people often collect things because it is aesthetically pleasing to them and they obtain joy out of owning and caring for these beautiful little objects and they love to put them on display so they can just appreciate their beauty. So anyways, if collecting is a hobby of yours, I would love to hear about it and I would love to hear about what you collect. Some examples that they had here were stamps, coins, antiques, comic books, action figures, vinyl records. If I had to think about things that I collect, Honestly, as said, I mean, I have a lot of makeup, but I feel like collecting is different than having a lot of, so maybe that's not true. Intentionally collecting, honestly, no, I have no clue. I just sat here for like 10 minutes thinking about what I collect and I don't think I collect anything. When now I'm sad about it. I'm like, why don't I collect anything? I should be collecting things. But anyways, moving on, some outdoor hobby ideas for you are gardening, which I think is a great hobby to get into, especially because nowadays, I don't know many kids my age, I'm like literally not a kid, but like, I don't know many people my age that know how to garden. Garden. that could be so wrong maybe so many people do and I just don't know any but like I definitely don't know how to garden properly and I would love to do that more not that it's a super mind-blowing rocket science thing but like I definitely don't garden enough I mean I water a few plants but that's about it bird watching I don't know if I'm into that but there's that fishing camping surfing rock climbing etc honestly I'm not a big outdoor hobby girl I used to camp all the time when I was younger but I don't know how to start a fire from scratch so maybe that's something I should be getting on to ASAP I'm more of a cabin type of gal a glamping type of girl if you say so surfing would be awesome though if I move to Costa Rica you best bet I will come out of there knowing how to surf when I was younger, some of my outdoor hobbies definitely were playing with chalk. I absolutely loved that and I would always make little hopscotches to 100. And the other day, my boyfriend actually had a bunch of chalk outside his house and I definitely played with that and I had so much fun doing that. So anyways, 
there are so many benefits to being in nature and spending time outside. I definitely think that I need to reconnect with Mother Earth every once in a while and just enjoy the outdoors more often. My friend is so in her outdoor era and she loves to like ground and like be... Same with my boyfriend, honestly. I feel like this is getting more popular too, especially with the Huberman labs and he's like telling you about all these ways to be more connected to the world and stuff and like how grounding is such an important thing, which means to be barefoot on the grass. A lot of my friends do this and one of my friends in particular, she's like always barefoot and so her feet are now getting so strong being in the outdoors and as a girly pop who wears a lot of heels, I thought it was cute that my Feet were turning into a point but actually that's so bad for your feet so I definitely should be outside more and she goes to the lake all the time and does a little like ice bath thing obviously it's not a bath it's in the river but I did that with her the other day and it was so fun I definitely felt very connected to mother earth I felt very rejuvenated so I want to do that more often some musical hobbies you can do is playing an instrument like a guitar piano violin when I was younger and in school I did the ukulele which was pretty fun and the recorder you can also do singing, which I think singing is one of my hobbies, especially in the car. DJing is another one. My friend actually just got into this and she bought a whole DJ set and she's been taking classes. And I feel like this is so fun, honestly. I would do that as like another career path. And also music production. As for culinary hobbies, this can be cooking, baking, brewing beer or making wine. That seems very difficult. Food blogging is another one. Honestly, I wanna start a blog so bad. I kind of do that with the newsletters that I talked about earlier in this video, but that might just be something you're seeing for me in 2024, but I feel like that's more of a creative thing for me. I've been a little bit out of my cooking and baking era, but it is so fun to, to do those hobbies. I think it is so soothing and kind of therapeutic. I also wanna throw in there that I feel like cleaning is also a hobby for a lot of people that is very therapeutic. Some intellectual hobbies that you can get onto is reading, chess, puzzle solving, like crosswords or Sudoku. I actually love Sudoku. I always do it on the plane and I'd like to say I'm pretty good at it, but I think they have it set on like the easiest possible level. So maybe I should just be quiet. Learning a new language. My parents are actually obsessed with Duolingo and they've been doing Italian for like a year now. Um, I feel like learning how to do tarot cards would be so interesting and something that I definitely want to do. I also do have a chess board on my desk here. I'm going to list a few more that I think are common and interesting so you guys can get the inspo, but video gaming I feel like is huge. Honestly, my boyfriend is a huge gamer as one might say and you know, they love it. I used to be such a gamer, honestly. I was addicted to computer games when I was younger. I don't know why, but like Club Penguin, Pop Tropica, Pet Society on Facebook. Like, why was I playing Facebook games at the age of grade three? I don't know. Other than that, renovating furniture, doing home DIYs, interior decorating. I feel like, I mean, that's not a hobby of mine, but I love doing that. Board game nights, I feel like are also a very common thing that people love to do. And my parents love playing Scrabble. And you know, I feel like that's an even intellectual hobby. Anyways, whatever hobby you pick, pick one that keeps you engaged and one that you actually look forward to doing. There's no point in getting a hobby that you don't actually like doing doing because you're not going to be motivated to do it. You're going to feel like it's a huge task and you're going to feel like weights are on your shoulder every time you have to do this thing. So pick something that is challenging yet fun and that makes you truly connect with either yourself or with other people. Something that you feel excited to do. I think that's the emotion that we're trying to spark here. It is just excitement, joy, and maybe even just being present. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was some ideas for you to free up your time if you are very busy to create space for hobbies. If you already have a busy schedule, I think it can be hard to allocate time for hobbies because as I said earlier, they can kind of feel like a waste of time when you have so many things to do. But we have to remind ourselves that this free time is what gives us the energy and drive to do the things that we don't want to do or the work that we have to do. So carving out time for these activities could be in the morning when you have a little bit of space before you get on with your day. This might mean waking up a little bit earlier, but if you're truly about it you will do it or doing them late during the evenings it also may be quieter during those times I would also just recommend at the beginning of the week making a schedule and carving out specific time for your hobbies especially going into a new year you might be getting a new planner or you might be getting a new journal and when you plan your journal at the beginning of the week you can set that time aside a good way for me to hold myself accountable to things that I want to do even if they're fun sometimes I feel like I can put them aside when there are things that are more important but when there is a committed schedule I know that I cannot miss it so that is what holds me accountable 
This might be getting a friend involved and having both of us meet up for this hobby. Or for example, when it's a group workout lesson, I have to sign up and if I don't go, I will be charged for it. And also, I think it's just being mindful about setting the intention of wanting to create space for hobbies and wanting to become better at hobbies in the new year so that when you know you are wasting time or you know you're being on your phone too much, you'll take a step back and think, okay, there's probably something better I could be doing with my time. If you need to set a reminder or you need to set scheduled screen time for yourself, I think those things can be helpful tools as well to remind yourself to get off your phone and do something in the real world. But yeah, I think that was the end of today's episode. I think it's important to give yourself some compassion, let go of perfection, do it when it feels right for you, trust that it's going to make you feel better, it's going to give you so much personal growth, but if you don't end up having time for it or it doesn't end up working out, it's not the end of the world, it's just for fun and I think that's the best part about it. Anyways, I love you guys, I hope this episode gave you some inspiration and that you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one. Oh,